When you want to collect information using your online form and bring it into your Salesforce org, you have native options. But these native options can get quite cumbersome if you have a need to issue many forms in various different shapes and forms. There are external solutions that you can leverage to speed up that process. There are some solutions that run inside your Salesforce org natively, and there are some others uh, that use their own servers, but they communicate with the Salesforce API. JotForm is one of those solutions, and it is very powerful. This video is sponsored by the good folks at JotForm. JotForm is an online form solution that offers a drag and drop interface and makes the whole process of online form creation super easy. With JotForm, you can create a form and collect online donations if you're a nonprofit, register attendees for your events, collect survey responses, or take orders. Once a form is created, that form can be embedded on your web page or shared via a link. And you can create various different actions on the back of your form to send out an autoresponder to the submitter or to send emails internally to your own staff and team to take action as a response to this submission. Now, without further ado, let me go into the details of the solution in a tutorial style format. When you search for the JotForm App Exchange solution in Salesforce App Exchange, you are going to find this page. This page has a lot of valuable resources that you can inspect uh, to understand how the solution works. And let me just also point out that JotForm has a dedicated email uh, for them to support you if you experience any issues with this app exchange solution. Uh, this is a freemium solution and it will allow you to build up to five forms that works with your Salesforce org before you have to pay for the solution. It's a great way for you to test the solution and see if the solution meets your needs. And after that, the pricing tiers are listed over here. And remember, there is a high discount for nonprofits. If you're a nonprofit, make sure you inquire about the discount rate. Once you install the JotForm solution in your Salesforce org, you are going to see JotForm listed here in your Waffle as an application that you can use. I have it already open here, but let me just show you how you get to it. And it has three tabs. The first tab is for your setup. It looks like this. It includes a video on how JotForm solution works. Now, mine is already logged in, so I'm not going to see a login uh, button here. But, you know, yours is going to show a login button that you have to click. Uh, and that allow you to log in and integrate your JotForm uh, side with your Salesforce solution. And if you don't already have a JotForm account, you can, again, create a JotForm account using these buttons on this page. Now, your resources section is kind of like a filtered view of all the knowledge base articles that JotForm has on Salesforce. Remember, JotForm doesn't only integrate with Salesforce. It supports several different CRMs and several uh, various different solutions. And the last tab is going to be your JotForm uh, form builder interface. This is pretty much the same interface that you're going to see if you log into JotForm yourself outside the App Exchange. But this kind of brings everything together and makes it very accessible when you're working inside your Salesforce org. Now, let me also point out here, uh, although this interface looks very similar to what you're going to see if you log into JotForm outside Salesforce, there are a couple of things that are different. Now, 
the most important difference here is if you go back to your form builder and you want to create a new form actually we do that here you're going to see that there is an option here that is usually not available in job form that says create a salesforce form and when you click on that you can select uh, all the objects that are available inside your salesforce org whether they are standard or custom and point to one of these objects for um, your JOT form, uh, form builder to create an automated form for it. Let's say I want to create a form from a lead, right? And as soon as I click on that, JOT form shows me all the fields for um, lead in Salesforce. And it also points out which fields are required. This is very helpful. Those are not optional. But I get to choose what other fields I want to include in my JOT form form. Phone, mobile phone, email, website, lead source and description, for example. And then I can create my form and that is going to take me to my form builder with all these uh, input fields included for me automatically. This is a huge time saver. I found this functionality very, very useful. Now, another thing I want to point out is if I go back to my um, form builder here, go back to my forms, I created a lead form, for example, here that I want to share with you. This is pretty much the standard lead form that is offered out of the box with the template. And it allows you to show your interest um, to the business where you're entering this form. And it allows you to also pick um, dates and times for you to be uh, available for a potential meeting with this business. And under your settings you can set up conditions you can customize your thank you page uh, and you can set up several flows and under publish you are going to see all the options that are offered to you to publish this form on a web page settings and integrations is the place where you set up your salesforce integration under integrations you go to salesforce if you have not authenticated your Salesforce org yet, it's going to ask you to authenticate it uh, because we have come from within uh, the App Exchange uh, solution that should have been already taken care of. And I have already set this up. You're going to see how it is set up. Uh, you choose one of these two options. And for this example, I chose the create a record option. In most cases, this is going to be the option that you want to use. This is creating a record. And if uh, there is an existing record that match the criteria that you're setting up, uh, it's going to update the existing record. You point your form to an object inside Salesforce, and then you match your fields. Now on the left side, you see the Salesforce fields, and on the right side, you see the JotForm uh, lead fields. It's important to point out that uh, here as well, like for picklist fields, you see all the available options that are offered to you that are pulled from Salesforce and presented to you inside JotForm. I found that very, very useful. Um, let me just you show you an example here. Uh, if I were to add a field here and show status on the right side, I'm going to see all the field values, the picklist field values that are available and set up inside my Salesforce org. And I can choose one of those. And if a, 
An existing record is available that can be updated without creating a new one, uh, then uh, I want to probably uh, activate this slider over here to have that functionality available to me. And this is going to allow me to, to set up criteria for JotForm to match the existing records against the submission and determine uh, which existing record should be updated uh, rather than uh, creating a new record. Now let me go back to my form builder and share with you another form that I have built. Now this is going to be the fundraising form. And the fundraising form uh, allows me to collect payments from the submitter. Now this is a very simple form that's asking for name, company, industry, uh, source, and then there's an amount set here, that's for $1. It is the recommended amount, but it can be changed by the user. And this is a Stripe component that's available to you inside JotForm that you can use to submit the payment to Stripe. And by using this, I quickly demoed in the free version uh, payment uh, to my Stripe account of $1 and it went through correctly. Let me just show you how that works. This is the published form and the published form is going to ask you all this information to submit this payment to Stripe and you get to actually change the amount here. This is a buy me a coffee field and you know the default amount is for one dollar. And another useful example here is the opportunity form that I have built. I found JotForm very powerful in creating multiple records that are associated with each other in Salesforce. You know how when, when you need to create multiple records that need to be related to each other inside Salesforce, you start with the parent record and then you create a child record and that child record lookup relationship field has to be filled in with the parent ID. That is all taken care of for you when you set up your form in the right way using JotForm. Now this is a form, it says it's an opportunity form and it's asking for first name, last name, company name, email, website, phone number, and the services the submitter is interested in, and you know, a free form area where they can um, detail their inquiry. Now, when I have uh, the person submit this form, what it is really doing is it's creating an account using the company name, it's creating a contact under the account using the first name and last name and email and the phone number. And it is also creating an opportunity that is going to record all these preferences for the person who submitted the form, uh, the services that they are interested in and all the detail behind it. And if I go to my settings and integrations here, I'll be able to show you how this is set up. Now you define multiple actions here. You start with the parent uh, record action. You create a record using the account. And in this case, I chose to also use the functionality to update an existing record if an existing record exists. So it's going to use the company name to create the account and the website. If there's a match, it's just going to update the existing, not create a new one. And after that, when I'm building my second action, you'll see that I have the option here to fill the account ID with the ID from step one, which is the create account step. So once uh, the create account successfully commits and it is available, uh, it's going to that ID is going to fill in here. Even when there's an existing account that's been updated, that 
account ID is going to be passed here and the relationship is going to be preserved on the Salesforce side. And again, for the contact as well, if there's a match, I'm using the existing contact. And let me just save this one and show you the opportunity part. And for the opportunity, I'm creating an opportunity uh, with uh, the field values that are set here in this uh, integration setting. Uh, and also I'm using for the object, both the account ID and contact ID in the lookups. So the opportunity will be related to both the account and the contact. And for the opportunity name, I created a name uh, that I syndicated from multiple fields. And the way I did that is in my form, I created a, an opportunity name hidden field. And that opportunity name hidden field is being um, built under my conditions. So under my conditions, I can set up uh, updates and calculations and I'm combining the company name with the first and last name of the person and then the word opportunity to uh, fill in that uh, field and that field I use in return in my integration to set up uh, the opportunity name and pass it to Salesforce. And that you can see here one more time. Opportunity name is being passed to the opportunity object field name. And in this case, I'm not really updating an existing record. I want a new opportunity to be created every time there is a new submission. So if there's an existing account, existing account is going to be kept. Uh, if there is an existing contact, existing contact is going to be used, but a new opportunity record is going to be created. Now let's go inside Salesforce here and see the example that I have set up here because I've tested this. And you're gonna see under Warner Bros account here, there's the Speedy Gonzalez contact and Speedy Gonzalez contact has two opportunities here created based on two different submissions. But we did not really create duplicate accounts or contacts for the same submission. And I can show you here the submission as well in the JotForm side. Let me, let me go back to JotForm here, JotForm form builder. And if I go back to my forms and check the submissions under the opportunity form, I'm going to see that there are two separate submissions for the same account and the contact, but the opportunity values are different. That's all folks. I hope you enjoyed the recording. And if you have any questions about online forms or job form, drop it in the comments below. I'll make sure to answer your questions. Give me a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you.